Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk about the Microsoft Shopify connector. So this is a new extension which is released on May the 26th. So you can see the functionality here described. So it can support multiple Shopify shops and also it has the bi-directional synchronization of items or products. It also can synchronize your inventory levels and then bi-directional synchronization of customers and also you can retrieve your Shopify orders in Business Central and uh, you can easily track the fulfillment information of your Shopify orders in Business Central. So um, this was planned if you go to the release notes and uh, for this release was planned if you go to Business Central the 2022 release with one plan for Business Central and you can see it under what's new and planned the Shopify connector was planned. The general public availability was May 11th, 2022, but it was a little bit delayed. So it was released on May, May the 26th, 2022. So uh, that's just to go through the features described there. So uh, this is a big change by Microsoft because uh, Microsoft is partnered with Shopify to provide this connector. And if you go to your Business Central on my version, I'm on Business Central version uh, 20.1. And uh, then uh, if you log into Business Central as a business manager, if you go to my settings, you could see my role is business manager. Then you will see a tab on the uh, added on the top. So this is a Shopify and uh, it has a bunch of uh, uh, subtabs, which is shops, customers, products, orders, gift cards, transactions, and payouts. The shops is for you to create multiple Shopify shop card. So let's say if you have multiple Shopify sites, then you can use this button to create them. So I already created two Shopify sites, one uh, linked to this ECA demo, another one linked to another sites. So, um, but after you filled in all this basic information, and uh, uh, you can enable you can enable your uh, Shopify shop card. Uh, so this enable button is here. Then you can also enable the log. So if you want to log any, uh, if you want to have any transactional logs, then you can enable that. So um, once you enable the shop card, then you should be able to synchronize for your products, images, inventory, customers, and payouts. You could do those synchronization and also you can uh, populate you can also populate your locations you, if you click on the locations there's a get shopify locations so it will automatically retrieve this id from shopify now you don't need to add it uh, manually and also you can uh, add your products if you go to products then uh, you can add the products to your shopify from your business central and based on the direction you set up, so right now the screen you see here actually is from is pulling the information from my Shopify site and then try to populate in my business central. And so, but you can do it in another direction. So when you synchronize item, you can select synchronize item. One is from Shopify, one is to Shopify. If you select to Shopify, then it's gonna uh, populate that products worksheet. When you add products, then you can, the process is like, you can say add items. When you add items, then it will populate a request, a report request page. This is a processing report to populate this worksheet. Then it will, uh, if you leave all the filters wide open, then it will populate this worksheet with your business central items. At the same time, they will be published to your Shopify sites. Because you can see there's a preview URL and there's a URL. Uh, so you can see how it looks like on your Shopify sites. Okay, so this is a nice feature. So you can do the items both way and also uh, for the for the uh, the ship, ship for the shipment method and payment method, you have to manually enter these by yourself. This some this these are the basic setup you have to do. And uh, for the orders, you can synchronize all the Shopify orders. You can see I already retrieved these orders from my Shopify sites. And then after you retrieve the orders, then you can see there are some orders. If the order status is still set, is, uh, if the order status is um, 
fulfilled and paid, then you will not see those orders here. So it's only putting those orders for unfulfilled and uh, authorized, which you ha haven't finalized the payment yet. So um, then they will be able to show up here because for those paid and fulfilled orders, there's no further actions you need to do from your business central. So that's why they're not pulled in. So um, then you can see there's one order. I already created a sales order for it. So this part is still not automated. Even on the sales channel, you have a button uh, which says automatically create a so if you go to order processing, you can see auto create orders. There's a there's a checkbox. Even you enable that, the orders was not automatically created. So you need to you need to auto, uh, manually first. You have to manually create. A, you have to go to order. Then you have to uh, you have to go to process and say create a new customer. And then you have to click on create a sales document. So this part is not automated right now from what I can see. But when Microsoft has um, any um, uh, detailed documentation for all these functionality works, then they can see how, how uh, Microsoft designed this. But right now, because even we look at the release notes, uh, so if we go to this release notes, it, the information is really, really general, general description of the functionality. There's not much details we can find from there. So um, then this is how you can create orders. You have to create a customer first, this manually, and you have to create a sales documents. And also it added some functionality for the gift card. So if we look at um, gift card, let's go back to our uh, main man, uh, role center. So you could see here, there's a gift cards. For the gift cards right now, um, so I added a gift card manually. I have to manually add this ID. Uh, you can get this ID from the URL of the gift card page on your Shopify admin portal. And then I added the last four digits of the gift card number. I added the amount. I added all these manually. But then uh, when I create an order, redeem the gift card, I do not see uh, the gift card amount has been automatically populated for the used amount. So um, yeah, so again, this we need to see the Microsoft design document to see how this functionality is designed. So it seems like have some functionality for the gift card, but doesn't seem to work well right now. And the transactions. So the transactions is putting all the credit card transactions. You can see which, uh, what credit card it is, like a Visa, Master, American Express. Uh, you can see what type of gift card and uh, what's the amount. Uh, authorized you can see those uh, you can see the authorized and captured so uh, when the authorized is only holding the found and once it's captured uh, the found is settled so there you can see different different type of the transactions there and also uh, it has a feature for the payouts I cannot really show uh, the feature for the payouts because um, I'm using the bogus gateway which is a task gateway it doesn't have any uh, actual uh, real gift card, uh, credit card transactions on it. So that's why there should be no settlement report from Shopify. If you are a merchant uh, signed up with Shopify, then you should have uh, for the payments you are taking that it goes through the Shopify payments first. Then you should receive the settlement report from Shopify. Then by using this payouts, you can uh, reconcile those amounts and post to your Business Central GL accounts. So I cannot really show this function, but the functionality is there. So uh, in general, uh, there are some really nice feature added here. And uh, you can see even for the uh, Shopify orders, you can see there's a risk level. So that was uh, uh, analyzed by Shopify and it tells you for this transaction, if it's any risk for fraud, so um, then it gives you a risk level, low, high, medium. And so this is a nice, and um, also it provides some uh, right away uh, visibility for how it looks like on the Shopify sites. Like when we publish the items, then it, there's a link for the items Then you can see uh, from those links. Then if you click on those links, you can see how it looks like on your Shopify sites. So those are nice features.
But what um, compared with other extensions on the app stores in Business Central, I will say uh, for the automation of the orders, then it still needs some improvement because this part to create a customer, even on the Shopify shop card, you set it up to create a sales order automatically, create a customer automatically. But right now, it seems like it's still manual. You still have to click on process, create a new customer first, and create a sales document in order to create a sales order from your Shopify orders. Okay, thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. I hope to see you guys again next time.